What's going on guys, this is Sam, and WWDC 2018 is less than two weeks away. I'm so excited if you can't tell already, and there's a lot to be excited for. iOS 12, macOS 10.14, watchOS 5, and tvOS 12 should all be announced on stage in less than two weeks when the keynote begins on June 4th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard. I'm definitely the most excited about iOS 12, and today I wanna to talk a little bit about when exactly it's gonna be released, how you can go ahead and get it, and some big features that we are expecting to see. So every year for the past five, six, or seven years now, Apple has held a keynote conference at WWDC, or at least a keynote session, usually lasts about one to one and a half to two hours, depending on how much they wanna talk about. This year, I would assume it'll be right around the two hour mark, so the keynote will begin at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard, and if the keynote is around two hours, it should be ending right around 12 p.m. or noon Pacific Standard, which means that the beta servers for iOS 12 should go online very shortly after. We never know exactly when, though. Like, it could be five minutes after the keynote, it could be 20 minutes, I think one year it was 30 or 40 minutes afterwards. You never really know, but once the green light happens, once everyone realizes that iOS 12 beta 1 will be available for download, the servers can get crazy, the downloads can get slow, and it can be a frustrating process sometimes. We actually don't know for sure if iOS 12 will be released on June 4th, but every year for the past five, six, seven, or eight plus WWDCs, Apple has announced new software on stage and released it to developers shortly afterward. And I think the exact same will happen this year with iOS 12. On day one, the only way to test iOS 12 in beta form is going to be to be a developer registered with Apple, but there are some shadier sites out there or ways to get it on your device, uh, I would caution against those just because if you install the beta profile, which is how you're gonna be able to get iOS 12 on day one on your device, sometimes uh, non-reputable sources can include malware inside of that and can actually mess up your device. So I would recommend going to a reputable source. I wish I could provide download links for all of you, but that's also like very shady territory just because I don't wanna get Apple angry or upset at me. And like, it's also not my software to distribute. So if you want it on day one, one, the best way to do it is to be a developer. You have to go to developer.apple.com register. I think the membership is $100 a year, but you get access to all of Apple's beta software uh, before anybody else. Like if you want to be a beta tester, this is definitely the best way to do it. That's pretty much the only way to do it if you want to get iOS 12 right away as soon as it's released, which this year will probably be right around 12, 15, 12, 30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. However, you can also sign up for Apple's public beta testing program. That doesn't mean you'll get it on day one. Usually they could switch it up this year, but maybe in two, three, three, four, five days, sometimes a week or two weeks after it's released to developers, you'll get the first beta version for free as a public beta tester, and then that's from Apple, it's authentic, it is verified, but you also won't have to pay anything, and it is completely free. Let's talk about some actual features that we're expecting to see. The biggest thing that we've heard time and time again is coming is cross-device apps, meaning that apps on your iPhone could start to work with your Mac in the future. I think that's really exciting, the UI and user experience portion, uh, is gonna be very interesting. Like, how are you gonna optimize this touch input app to work with a keyboard and mouse? We don't know just yet, but I cannot wait to see what Apple has been working on. That was one of the first rumors we heard months ago, and it continues to be said that we are gonna be seeing that in June in just a couple of days. Another really big feature that Apple will probably focus on on stage at WWDC this year with iOS 12 is new digital health tools to view how long you've been using your device or how long your child has been using their device and what apps you've been using, your screen on time, because there's sort of a growing concern that being on your phone a lot is a bad thing and we don't really know yet. Like a lot of research still needs to be done, but Apple is going to at least provide us the option to view our usage and see how much we're using our phone just because I think it could be interesting we say, oh, I've only been on my phone for an hour or two today, but then the usage might say three or four hours from every time we've taken it out of our pocket. So I'd be really interested to see my usage because uh, I don't really know, like I have an idea right now, but I don't know for sure. With augmented reality, Apple may be introducing a multiplayer mode so you could play games with your friends in augmented reality. With iOS 12, we'll also be seeing new Animoji characters. We don't know just one yet, but Animojis will also be coming to the iPad with the Face ID enabled bezel-less iPad that should be coming at WWDC as well. We've seen some renders for it and we've heard that it should be coming. We just haven't heard recently that this device is absolutely coming at WWDC, so I hope it wasn't delayed because it looks like it is gonna be incredible. And emoji should also be coming to FaceTime as well. And this one is kind of cool. You'll be able to put the animojis over your face. And I mocked up how this could look in a conversation and like a potential 
and emoji picker. It's gonna be super gimmicky, I think, and, and the novelty will wear off very quickly. But if FaceTime gets monotonous or you contact the same person all the time, like you could be FaceTiming your significant other, grandma, grandpa, mom, or dad, and throw an emojis on your face while you're talking. It could definitely be pretty entertaining. The Stocks app in iOS 12 should be getting a redesign. We have no idea what it's gonna look like. And a lot of the next things that we'll talk about are very ambiguous. Like there's said to be small upgrades inside of the Photos app. And the photo import UI, I think on iPad, will be getting a redesign. iOS 12 is also said to be more responsive. As you can tell, these are all very ambiguous, unclear things that Apple, I'm sure, will dive into more detail in with iOS 12 when they talk about it on stage. Siri is said to be getting deeper integration with search in iOS 12 and I hope in general Siri just gets better because the platform is light years behind Google and Alexa at this point. Face ID in iOS 12 is going to be getting a slight upgrade. You'll be able to use it horizontally in addition to vertically and um, that should be coming for the new Face ID enabled iPad because obviously you can hold that device in portrait or landscape mode. And then finally the last rumor for iOS 12, this is pretty much everything we've heard so far, is that it should support the iPhone 5S. So June 4th is coming up very soon. Like I said, less than two weeks Weeks from now, we'll be using iOS 12 beta 1 as developers. Cannot wait. I'm so excited. Let me know down below in the comments section which feature you are most excited to see. Honestly, I really want to see the cross-device apps between iOS and macOS, but I also am kind of interested to try out the Animojis in FaceTime. If you enjoyed watching, it does help me out if you drop a like. Subscribe for more iOS 12 videos in the future. If you want to help support the channel and make future videos like this one possible, you can head over to patreon.com slash update and donate either a dollar or more there. That would be amazing. Or get a t-shirt over at shop.iupdateos.com. I've been Sam. Hope all of you are doing great. Get hyped for iOS 12, and I'll talk to you in my next video.